Hallelujah. Yeah. Happy birthday in Naria. Thank you. While you are sitting down, you can say to the Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. you are the author of my faith. Today I need my faith to act, to act, to act. Again, Lord Jesus, you are the author of my faith. I need my faith to act, to act. Help my words and my thoughts. Bow down your heads. I need my faith. Is the author of your faith. You need your faith right now to act. Help me. Help my words and my thoughts. You are the author of my faith. Lord Jesus, I need my faith now to act. Help my words and my thoughts in Jesus Christ's name. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at the book of Colossians, the book of John, the book of Acts, and the book of Ephesians. So we take our reading first from the book of Colossians. Colossians 3, verse 16. Let the message of Christ dwell among you. Are you there? Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, that is abundantly. That is our protest, but take from the beginning of that book. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above, like I have told you. Set your heart on things above. Where Christ was, seated at the right word, at the right hand of God. So you take look at verse 16 let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with wisdom through psalms hymns and songs from the spirit hallelujah Amen. the book of Ephesians 17. So that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. It means through faith, Christ can dwell in your heart. Christ dwell in my heart through faith. Hallelujah. You take your reading from the beginning, but I'm giving you the proof test. So let's go to the book of John. John 15. Verse 7. If you remain in me, and my word remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be what? Okay. Will you take your time to read that book of Ephesians 3, verse 17, and Galatians 3, verse 16, and the book of Acts 20, 32? You will agree with me in that. Christ and the Word are one. That is, Jesus Christ and the Word are one. The book of John 15, 7. It says, If you dwell in me and my Word dwell in you, ask whatsoever and it shall be done. If Christ dwell in you and his word dwell in you, can you see? Christ and the word are and efficient, you find the same. You say, 
Christ can only live in you through faith, live in your heart through faith. And the, our heart is of faith. Man's heart of faith, not man's mind. When you say heart, you mean your spirit, biblical. So in this way, it is the well dominating us that produces prayer fruit. That is resource. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. What are you saying? Are you saying this with all your heart? Because in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we know Christ through his word. We know him through the word. Christ we know through the word. In the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. What are you saying? Are you with all your heart? Do you mean it? It is the word dominating us that produces the prayer fruit. I mean, that produces resort. Not the word committed to memory, which is, of course, valuable in itself, but cannot produce prayer fruits. But cannot do what? Cannot produce prayer fruits. How can the word dwell in our hearts? The word dwell in our hearts when we read slowly, attentively, and repeatedly without holding grudges. You say, how will I read? If I hold grudges here to any of my neighbor anywhere, I should not be surprised that the word is no longer real to me. Why talking? Why preaching? Why reading? And if the word is no longer real to me, in the name of Jesus, I'm talking to myself. It is not real. Be he, I'm talking of myself because it's no longer real. So in the same way, you, if I hold grudges, I should not be surprised to see that the way is no longer real when reading, when preaching, when talking, when praying. So can you see the challenge you are facing? Committing the word to memory. Which of course valuable in itself, but cannot produce prayer fruits. They cannot produce resource. We know Christ through the word. Through the way we know Christ, we know Jesus Christ. It is the way that has taught us the value of the name Jesus, the authority of the name, and our legal right to the use of the name. It is the word, the word of God. Our legal right to the use of name. Yeah, nobody will challenge you and say, in the name of Jesus, nobody will accuse you. But the legal right to use the name by the power of Holy Ghost, it is the word that taught us. How can the word dwell in us? The word dwell in us when we read slowly, attentively, and repeatedly without what? Without holding what? That holy grudge. That holy grudges. So how many of us here are free of grudges? Pain of the past. How many? How many? How many? 
forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. That is what the Bible is saying. And when you read the Bible, you hear from God. Forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us, whether wrongly or right, whatever way. And you are carrying the Bible to read. So the word dominating us is the lordship of Christ in us. Good example, be healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be delivered. In the name of Jesus, be set free. It is the word that dominating us that brings Jesus to the scene. And instantly, healing takes place. It is the word dwelling in us that brings Jesus to the scene. Jesus, and he will come. Uh -huh. It is the word that dominating us, dwelling in us, living in us, that brings Jesus to the scene. So now, you know where your challenge come from. Though you have the Bible, the name Jesus, you know how to call. But it seems that name is not given the result. Listen, we know Jesus Christ through the word. Without the word, it's without Jesus Christ. As the world rules us, Jesus is building himself to us and making himself a part of us. Tell your neighbor, is the word dominating us? I mean, is the word dwelling in us? Is the world living in us? Is the world ruling us? Jesus is building himself in us and making himself a part of us. The more you meditate, the more your spirit acts upon the word, and the more the word becomes part of you. The more you meditate on what you read in the Bible, the more your spirit acts upon the word. Or you say, the more your heart is the same, the more your spirit acts upon the word. And the more the word becomes part of you. When the word becomes part of you, you can make use of it. Then you can say, in the name of Jesus, be free. And if there's freedom, me, the word has become part of you. When the word becomes part of you, you can say, Jesus, when you sleep and there's a nightmare or an attack in the dream, some people come to, with God to attack you, say, Jesus, and you see them bow. Instead of while you are in the dream, you see people coming to attack you, you say, eh, honey, 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 honey. How can honey, honey, honey become Jesus? Honey, 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 honey will not say, what is happening, my dear? Is that not what is happening to you? People come with gun to attack you, say, mm. <coughs> honey, honey, honey. Honey will not say, my dear, what's happening, what's happening? Ah, in Jesus' name. And they have attacked you already before you got the name. <laughs> they have attacked you because they were has not become part of you. As the world dominates us, this is the world living in us. Jesus is building himself in us, making himself a part of us. The world has not yet dominated you, has not yet dwelling in you. 
you can have the knowledge of the Bible, you read, memorize, and use it to preach, to teach, to lecture. But living by it, it must dwell in you. Don't forget those passages and books given to you. Take your time to read the book of Ephesians 3. Take reading from 17. The book of John 15. Take reading from 7. The book of Acts 20. Take reading from 32. The book of Colossians 3. Take reading from 16. You cannot build one up spiritually. Because today, this is what has happened all over. Everywhere, church has become entertainment. We cannot build people up spiritually on the theory about the book, on the history of philosophy. Jesus is this, the mother is here, the father is this, the son is day, he was born in the major. This are this. You cannot be built up spiritually on the history of the book or theory about the book. On the philosophies of the book. The world must dominate, must live in us. Beauty can only come from the heart. It is what comes from our heart that can build. Don't forget at the beginning, I said if I hold grudges, I should not be surprised to see that the Bible is no longer read to me when talk when reading, when preaching. You see what is going on in churches today? There's so much division. That is grudges. This is why the Bible is no longer read to us. Because so much division. This one is not good, that one is not good. Fight everywhere in churches. The churches are no longer one. This is why the Bible is no longer read to us. We are no longer one. Fight. Many of us are here today without the permission, because if you collect permit, they will not allow you to come. And many are sitting at the back. Each time the camera comes in, they dodge. <laughs> because they don't want their mentor to see them. Each time the camera comes, and even some putting on very dark shade. This time camera come, they bow. Instead of bow for Jesus, they bow for camera. <laughs> when it is mass prayer, instead of facing, they turn back. Jesus name, Jesus name. As if the Holy Spirit is the one turning them. Because they cannot bear the consequence after living here. They will chase you out of your, your business, chase you out of your house because they are your bread win. So this is why the Bible is no longer read to us because there is division. So I want to leave you here. I don't want you to have so much to think about. I want you to have so much to meditate about, not to think about. Thank you, thank you, thank you.